Hey everyone, Port SM. Welcome to part two of our Revel Premium 124 BMW 850i video build. So in part one, we dealt with all our bodywork, or well, the majority of it. We've still got plenty of work to do on that. Part two, we're going to deal with the mammoth task of cleaning up all the chassis, all the running gear, the drivetrain, the engine, suspension, brakes, etc. Over 90 parts just in this section alone. It's a very part-heavy kit. It's not the nicest plastic, and it's quite laborious doing so. Yeah, we've got quite a bit of work ahead of us, uh, but we're going to get that built up, and at the end of it, we're going to chat about wheels, what we're going to do about wheels, uh, and then we come back in part three and get our interior done. So, let's crack on with the build, let's get started. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. Okay, this is back with part two of our Revel Premium 124 BMW 850i. Today we're going to focus on all the engine, the running gear, suspension, brakes, and chassis. Now, there's a lot of parts of this. This kit's a premium kit for a reason. Um, there's a lot of detailed parts. As you can see, lots of them. In total, 90 parts to the engine, running gear, which includes the brakes, drivetrain, suspension, etc. Lots of parts. All these here that took hours of cleanup. Um, <laughs> there was a lot of cleanup. It's old Revel plastic, and it's quite nasty to clean up. So it did take quite a bit of time to get through. Now, somebody did ask a very good question. This is a premium kit, but comes with no photo edits, like the newer ones. Well, purely and simply, it's an old kit. It's 32 years old. It's never really been reboxed. I don't think it ever will be. Tamiya sold it under their own banner for a while as a Tamiya branded kit, so they could take this kit to the Japanese market. Uh, and literally, from what I believe, because Revel did or do own the Barago brand, um, this is one of the Barago diecast kits. Uh, basically broken down and made into a plastic kit. Now, looking at the kit and the way it's made, I can see where that thought process comes from. Whether it's completely true, I don't know. But I do have the opportunity to buy a Barago version of this car. Uh, cheap, so I may well buy it and compare them side by side. So we clean up all the parts, using various sanders. We're going with the thinny sticks, the thinny sponge. We're using a knife to get in areas here and scrape off seams. We can't get, quite get to it. So pick and choose your weapon as you go. I use the Ultimate Sanders. They're my own brand of sanders. Uh, and they're what I've used for years now. A good uh, maybe 10 years. And they just work wonderful. Good grit of sander. Reliable. Uh, a good range of sanders and types as well. So these do the job really well. So just clean it up with your sander of choice. If you need to switch to a sponge sander, you can as well. And then finish everything off with a buffer. And there we go. There is all the parts cleaned up de-seamed all the rubbish bits of plastic off them because there was quite a bit of i wouldn't say it was flash but a lot of stringy bits of plastic here and there and we can now get everything mounted and prepped ready for primer so we've got some bits to assemble first and i need to go through instructions and figure out your build process and the way you're going to do this so i tend to just get the instructions look through what is going to be the same color what could be glued together so can the transmission be built can that be attached to the engine are they all the same color What's going to be black? What's going to be silver? What's going to be all the different tones? And I tend to break them down into little sub assemblies as we go. So, a part like this, I glue them, clamp them, put them to one side, let them dry for a few hours. Then it can be sanded. And if they need assembling together like this, we can get the bell housing or the clutch housing, is it, onto the gearbox itself and glue it in place. It's all the same color. So, we also glue it in place now rather than painting them all separately. This saves a lot of time down the line. And a lot of assembly with super glue. And again, we can carry on to attach this to the engine block because, again, it's all the same color. Well, that's the way we're going to do it. If you want to do different tones, you can leave these parts separate. But for me, this is the easiest way of doing it. And my reference pictures seem to show all being pretty much the same color. So, again, just go around, look what parts can go on. The more parts we can glue on now, the less fuss it is later on. Uh, and like I say, if it doesn't need glue in a separate color, keep it off. It's easy to paint the mask. Uh, and then glue it on later with some CA glue, uh, as we'll do with some of the parts as we go through the build. And again, with the engine, uh, cylinder heads, cam covers, and what have you, 
have a look. Can they go on now? Now, be careful with these. They are handed. Uh, but I did find some of the parts would go on the wrong way if you weren't careful. So pay particular attention to those instructions. Uh, the key, you know, pictures which show the way things are orientated. Make sure they go on the correct way. And don't go mad with the glue. You don't need lashings of glue. Um, I tend to load it up, wipe the brush off, and then wipe the brush across the part. Capillary action will carry it into all the recesses. And obviously on this, there's quite a bit of repeat where you're doing the opposite side of the cylinder banks because it's a nice big uh, 5 litre V12, one of BMW's flagship engines. Um, it's a monstrous beast of an engine. It really is. Proper cruiser of a car. So, like I said, don't go mad with the glue. You don't need tons of You see, I load it in. But my bottle's nearly empty, so I quite often don't even need to wipe it off because it's not picking up all that much glue. But you can just see anywhere else, I just touch it, let the capillary action carry the glue around the part and put everything in place. So, like I say, it's up to you and your build process. This, for me, works. This is how I do everything. Then, so like I see suspension springs, which are pretty nasty, to be honest. These are pretty dire, but they don't look too bad in the end. Um, glue them together. Give them a little bit of a clamp. Try and get a little bit of molten plastic to come out because that'll save you filling them. And then these can be glued, clamped, and left to one side for a bit, and then sanded later on. Rear differential. Again, get as much of this assembled as we can. As I said, it's 32 old Revel plastic. It's pretty cheap and nasty. It really is. Um, so it does show its shortcomings, this kit. It's not an easy kit to find. It's expensive. I'll be honest, is it worth the money? I'm going to reserve judgment to the finish this build because I've heard horror stories about it fitting. But things like the brake discs are dire. The, these are horrendous. They're some of the worst brake discs I've ever seen. They look more like brake drums than discs. Um, with these parts glued together, uh, they've dried. I'm getting a knife in there to get rid of any ejection marks and what have you. I'm just going to speed this section up as well. And I can clean all the glue parts up with the sanders as we go. I've left that out because we don't be here all day looking at stuff. But this is me mounting stuff for primer. So we've got a mixture of using cocktail sticks in holes to the crocodile clips to hold in parts on. And that's the easiest way of doing it. If there's a hole, get a uh, cocktail stick in there. If you can clamp it with a, the, one of the clips, clamp it with one of the clips. And if you need to, grab a drill. It's my little black drill. You all know the story. Drill a little hole in it. Pop a cocktail stick in a little hole. And the same as with using super glue, drill the hole in an inconspicuous area. So usually a mounting point where you won't see it. And as on these, um, I don't know what these are. are. These injection rails, they could be. I don't know what they are. Um, put the glue in an area where it's going to be glued and won't be seen. Then the exhaust on this, twin exit, twin pipe exhausts, um, not hollowed out. So I decided to drill them out. So carefully in there with a pretty big drill. I'm going to guess that's like a 1.6 mil drill bit. Uh, and that gets the majority of it out. If you need to clean out the rest, you can file it, you can sand it, you can get a knife in there. But for me, this did an adequate job of getting in there and drilling it out. Little details like this add all the difference to a build. And there we go. There's one rack of parts. We ended up with two and a half of these part stands full of parts. Lots and lots and lots. Now, primer, we're going to use Mr. Service of 1500 Black for the majority of it. If you've enjoyed my daily live hangout, you will see me now. I have a spray booth camera now as well. So if you're live, you can join me spraying. It's exactly the same angle as this camera. So it's quite nice for everyone to be able to see. Whether anyone's got any benefit from it, I don't know. But I don't feel as guilty now leaving people while I go and spray. So if you haven't checked out my daily hat live streams, the link on my other channel in the description down below. You can come on over and join us. I'm live enough every day. Uh, you can come and join us and join our little community over there. Mr. Service for 1500, thin 60 70% with Mr. Hobby level and thinner. We've got the 0.3 mm apex, 18 psi, couple of white coats of the black, uh, and working our way around the parts. So basically, I go around the whole uh, tray of parts, give it a light coat. By the time you've gone around it all and come back, that coat's dry. You can go around and put a second coat down. I usually find two good coats of this, Mr. Service there is more than enough. But on parts like this, big parts with loads of recesses and, you know, intricate parts you may need to just pay attention uh, and go around a bit more intricately with the airbrush and make sure you get right in all those little recesses to make sure it's prime if you put a black primer on a black part it can be quite difficult to see um, so lose, use the light to your advantage angle the light and you'll see the sheen of the plastic disappear like i say lots of parts lots and lots and lots everything's primed we're back here now about four or five hours later 
Um, we've got some Tamiya LP5 semi gloss black, and we're going to give all the parts that require to be semi gloss a couple of coats of this. It's lovely and warm in the UK at the minute. Uh, it's been a nice, steady 26, 27 degrees, 28 degrees at some points today. Um, so everything's been drying really quick over the past few days. So no dramas with paint drying quick. No issues with spraying. I never have any issues, even when it's humid, um, especially using a lack of paints. These are so well suited for hotter, drier climates. And like I say, just put a couple of light coats down this. You're putting black over black, so it covers really, really quickly. So there's no need to hose it on. And obviously, it's a semi-gloss finish anyway. For the suspension parts, we're going to prime these in white. We're going to paint these in yellow, then mask them up and paint the other detail parts. Um, so we've got some Tamiya fine surface primer. It's been decanted, thinned about 20-30% with Tamiya lacquer thinner or retarder. I don't really have a measurement, and we get a couple of coats of that down. And we've got some old of the original Mr. Hobby uh, Super Fine Silver Mark One, I suppose it is. The original colour, just because I'm going to use it up before I go to the, uh, the number two version. Pretty similar colours. Uh, I'm just going to give this a couple of light coat to this. Now, these are proving more and more my favourite metallic colours. If you've seen the Model Factory Hero build, um, these are where I've used the majority of on there. Very limited colour range. There's six in the range. Every one of the colours is just beautiful. So finely pigmented. Beautiful to spray. I'm using the Mr. Hobby Rapid Thinner because I think you get a much better finish. The theory is that the metallic particles don't have enough time to sink into the surface as much and they stay on top and you get a much more metallic sheen because it dries quicker. Whether that's true, I don't know. But all I can say is after a couple of coats, that is one stunning metallic finish. We do a super iron, which we're going to use on the exhausts, uh, a stainless, which is a beautiful color, a uh, gold, it's just wonderful paint in absolutely beautiful tones. I wish there was more in the range, but alas, there's only seven and only six we can get in the UK. LP38 matte aluminium now on these uh, inlet manifolds. Mm, I think they are inlet manifolds. And then this little piece of engine cover here as well. So the LP paints, metallics, lovely, really nice. Thinned with uh, Tamiya standard lacquer thinner. And then this is the Mr. Hobby Super Iron. This is a wonderful colour. Absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Nice dark iron colour. So we're going to paint the exhaust up. Get them a nice metallic colour. And then we're coming with that burnt... Um, uh, alkali burnt iron like we did on the Lancia. On the exhaust. And give them a little bit of weathering. So it gets rid of that monotone metal colour. But what a beautiful colour. Look at that. Just after one coat. Absolute fantastic coverage. Really, really nice. So if you've not tried them, it's Super Metallics. These are the newer uh, Mark IIs, I suppose you could call them. You can see the different bottle at the back. It's smaller bottles with silver lids. Not the Buffables. These are the Super Metallics. Uh, I highly recommend these. We do sell them at UMP. Not always have them in stock because they can be quite difficult to get. But well worth a try. The chassis. Now, a bit of a panic on this. I thought, uh-oh, I haven't painted the chassis and the engine bay. And it needs to be body colour. And I had very little of the original paint left because it's a large car, lots of open areas. We need to use a lot of paint. And I had a bottle of paint for 30 mil. I reckon I had about less than a quarter of it. And I was like, oh no, I'm going to be able to do it. So I thought, right, we'll prime in pink. We primed the original body in white, if I remember right. But red always covers well over pink. And I thought, we'll see how far we get. Um, this is Tamiya's Fine Surface Pink Primer. Decanted, off gas, thin 20%, 30% with Mr. Uh, sorry, with Tammy Lacquer Thin with Retarder, 0.3 foot mil apex, 18 psi again, two, three nice coats of this, beautiful primer. I do love the Tamiya primers. Uh, a lot of people comment about the faff of decanting them. It's not really that difficult. And uh, it's worth it for the uh, the properties of painting them because they spray beautiful. And here's the paint. Now I went into this thinking I'm not gonna have enough at all. I'm gonna run out of paint halfway through it on a half painted chassis. Half painted engine bay, and I'm gonna to have to order a bottle of paint and wait God knows how long for it to arrive. So, using the usual spray uh, discipline and technique with gravity because you need to put them on in thin coats. They are one of the most forgiving of the automotive based color match colors, but you've still got to go thin on them. You can't go too heavy. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised that to get this fully painted to the correct shade, I didn't even use a quarter of the color cup. Uh, and barely any of the paint that was left in the bottle. Hardly any at all. Covered so well. 
and the depth we got off the paint as beautiful as when we primed it uh, in white originally. So no dramas there. We just did the engine bay on the bottom of the chassis. And then I wanted to have it gloss. So rather than breaking out the 2K, I thought we'd get some Mr. Hobby UV Super Gloss Clear. I'm just dusting it off because it's been on the spray booth overnight. There we go. Make sure we've got no dust on there. And then we're going to rattle can it. Uh, I didn't have any decanter, otherwise I would have airbrushed it. Um, and um, time was of the essence. I didn't want to have to wait another five to six hours because it's going to hold me up on the video. So I opted to spray can. If you've got good spray technique, you'll get just as good as finish as with an airbrush. If you haven't, it's a recipe for disaster. So the trick is don't put it on too thick, especially on the first coat. So I put a light coat down there, put it to one side to dry for 10, 15 minutes and off gas. And while we're there, we're going to get some Mr. Hobby um, yellow. I'm going to have to guess the color because I can't quite see it, but it's a dark yellow. I'll try and remember and I can't. So it's not quite a lemon yellow, but it's a nice shade of yellow, yellow. We'll go with that. So not very well prepared, am I? Terrible. I can see the bottle. It's in my spray booth, but I don't want to go and get it. So I'll put it on screen. I'll put it on screen what it is for you. Oh, unless we can see it. No, we can't. We didn't see it. Um, with those painted, we then give this another coat of paint. And we'll go a little bit heavier on the second coat, just to try and get a bit more gloss down. So it's going to be probably four light coats. This. It looks like there's a lot going down. With an aerosol, you are missing most of the model with the spray. Most of it's going into the uh, spray booth filter. As you see, I've got a good distance away. It's not gone on too thick. Probably looks like it is, but you can just see, look, you can see the orange peel because I'm not putting it on too thick. Then after four nice coats, there you go. Now you're going to think, oh my God, it's too thick. Trust me, that will level out beautiful later on and will not look anywhere near as thick. But leave it like that and that's a finish. It'll almost dry like. Next day now, and we're in the uh, normal work area, and we've got some Vallejo model color black. And we're going to detail paint some of the parts. Now, it's going to be a very subtle difference between the Vallejo model black, uh, model color black to the LP5 semi gloss, but it's noticeable enough and uh, just adds a little bit of visual interest to the part. So, we're just going to paint up these rubber parts with it, paint up some of the uh, bush clamps where they go. Bush clamps, they sound painful, don't they? um and like on the prop shaft drive shaft whatever you want to call it uh just detail paint some of the areas have a little bit of visual interest so again it's up to you you could mask and spray these by all means but sometimes it is quite nice to go back to uh, hand painting and it can be quite relaxing now of our suspension dry we're going to leave the uh shock area yellow so we're going to mask all this up and then we're going to paint the spring and the bottom leg of the, suspen uh, the uh, suspension uh, arm in black so quite a boring chassis but hey that's what we're going to do is using the tamiya two mil tape and we're just going to tape this up so we get a nice demarcation at the top and then bring it down in a spiral and then straighten it out at the top so we've got two nice demarcated is that even a word lines at the top and then on the front ones we just go right up to the very edge and these are going to go painted silver at the top so Nice contrast of colours. We get a wash on them later as well. And uh, they'll look really good. So, love this Tamiya tape. It's just as good a quality as their largest 6, 10 and 18 mil tape. Uh, a lot of people ask about the white tape. Avoid the white tape. It is terrible. I did a review on it a long time ago where it worked. But then when you go back and try and use it again, it just keeps lifting off. It's an absolute nightmare. This stuff is great. Like I say, it's just a thin version of their tape. There we go, there's all those parts painted up, all our exhaust is painted up. Um, we're going to mask up our calipers, and in the spray booth, we're going to paint the black on the suspension, uh, on the rear suspension, we're going to paint the silver on the front, we're going to put some burnt in iron over the um, exhaust part, and we've also masked up the calipers, or what are supposed to be calipers, and we're going to paint them in a metallic uh, grey colour. So pretty basic painting really, this is LP5 semi gloss black, uh, as always, thin 60% with uh, Tamiya Lacquer Thinner of Retarda, 0.35 Apex, um, 18 PSI, all the standard spray. And uh, same on the front springs as well. You know me, I keep everything as simple as possible. The less you've got to remember, the less mistakes can be made. And then we've got some LP Titanium Silver. And why have we used Titanium Silver? Purely and simply because I'd run out of LP11. So... Fumbling around the bottles, this was the easiest colour, 
and a nice silver so i just grabbed it and this is lp61 this is metallic gray another favorite color of mine from tamia very very nice color it's a very subtle difference between the brake disc that we did uh but i think it's very fitting for the age of the car so a couple i coats of this with some well masked areas and we shouldn't get any bleed through at all and then here's the alkaline burnt iron i was going to lightly weather not as heavily as we did on the lancia but it's going to lightly weather the exhaust just to take that sheen it's a shame to do because the metallic parts look absolutely fantastic but for me they just need to be a little bit more of a burnt metal look so a couple of light coats of this will take away that real nice metallic luster and just add a little bit of a smoky burnt iron look to it all so just go around everything a couple of light coats don't go mad don't hose it on very easy to put too much stuff of this stuff down it really is uh, we've got the 0.2 mil apex now 18 psi and just put a couple of pieces down jet pin marks on the exhaust you will not see those they go at the top so you will never see those bits if you are fussy you want to remove them you can uh, if you're really fussy wait till you see the ones i've missed in the engine bay that i still haven't noticed yet and there we go there's all the exhaust weathered up beautiful color look at that absolutely stunning the suspension painted and the calipers painted as well now we've got our intakes from the uh, mass airflow sensors here. So we're going to paint these in silver. And there's two of these, big V12 engine, sucking lots of air. So it needs two air filters, two mass airflow sensors, uh, and two induction pipes um, on either side. So two of these to paint. So some model color, sorry, model air silver, brush painted on. Again, nice to get back to brush painting every now and then and very carefully and neatly painted the beauty as always you're using water-based paint over lacquer is that if you make a mistake get a cotton bud wet it and it'll wipe right off so nothing to be scared of here you take your time it is possible to brush paint the likes of tamiya x and xf paints and even the lps uh, but they're not as forgiving as water-based now we can unmask everything we're already on the majority of the suspension components at the back so just the front one to do as you see it's all looking good nice clean demarcations and everything which is always important it looks uh, a lot neater because if you're not going to get a demark demarcation neat you might as well brush paint if you're not that fussed so be it i am though i do pride myself on my masking and there we go there's our calipers unmasked as well and then a quick ocd arrangement of all the parts been enjoying doing this lately it's kind of like knolling if you know what knolling is laying out all the parts uh just to get a picture and show what's there but like i say 90 parts in this in total 90 parts very busy engine bay and running gear um yes now another thing i've been using lots of lately i've shown these before these super good nozzles from amazon so these are about 10 pound for 300 come in a nice little case as well there's a link for these in my amazon store down below and you can cut them to not only length on the nozzle like so but also length at the top and if you shorten that you don't waste as much glue out the nozzle and there we go they are a precision tip as you can see and i am finding these super handy especially on that model fat hero kit but on parts like this it's neater than using a cocktail stick um, these parts are quite fiddly they are handed as well so make sure you get them the right way around there's the one and the other one's on as well and then we've got the auxiliary belts on the front. Now, I just painted these black. You're not going to see them. I've looked. They're completely hidden in the engine bay. And you're going to probably say, oh, that's a lazy way of modeling. It is, but you've got to be very precise in getting those things to look good. And I just thought, what's the point? They're going to be hidden away. We're never going to see them. I'd rather spend my time making the other parts look better than waste it on them. These are intake manifolds, I think. And these kind of cross over each other. So I've got one glued in place, and then the other one, you'll notice I have to move the left-hand one just a little bit to get this one in. You can see it move now. You ready? There you go. Just popped out. Let me pop that one in. Pop the other one down. Job done. There we go. Quite a nice engine. Big old V12 from BMW. Glorious engines. And then a little dab of glue over the top for the, um, the cover for the center. Never had one of the V12s, but I did have a V8 uh, 740, which was the same engine that went in this car. Uh, what a glorious engine that was. Absolutely roared. 
it was quick cruised well and just a powerful engine so these v12s i always thought were more of a cruiser whereas the v8 was the more sportier engine in my opinion manifolds in place these are a bit weird they look the wrong way around to me they really do but it's what the instructions call for uh, and it's very strange how the exhausts mount to them because they mount underneath really strangely um they're a bit weird and then the cooling fan the vicious cooling fan you go careful with this it'll bite you so a little dab of glue on there as well it's glued in place there's a little hose to go in the back and then this here as well which i'm assuming is a starter motor no it can't be i've no idea what that is then no idea but it glues in there anyway and it's silver now i did use a lot of color references from revel uh, but I also had a look online at a lot of pictures of the real car to get some colour references. Loads of pictures of this engine, um, so loads of references for it. And uh, now we're on to our suspension, including this rear subframe, which glues together in halves. So I basically fitted it together, cracked it apart, a little dab of glue each side. Squeeze it together like so, and then being careful and mindful of your fingers. You see now we've got a nice glossy chassis. Look at that. It's not overdone. Looks wonderful. Beautiful colour. Nice high shine. And then we've still got a bit of glue on that subframe. So we can just push it straight into the holes. I would advise dry fitting parts like this to make sure they do actually fit. But overall, no problem at all. And then again, this precision super glue applicator. Straight in where we want it. And put the suspension springs in place like so. Trust me, get these tips. They are very, very good very handy and then one of the rear anti-roll bars wherever they are i think it's anti-roll bar just glues in place as well so it's quite a complex model quite a complex build uh certainly lots to pay attention to rear differential with our drive shafts in as well like so they're pretty symmetrical i couldn't really see which way around they went they're not handed so no problem to get the wrong way around go there's that and a little dab of glue where it needs to go in a minute and then we get our suspension rear shocks in so a little dab of glue at the bottom on each one line them up and get them in like so get them straight and then pop our differential in place there's a little locating point at the fr uh, back there so a little dab of the glue the beauty of this bob smith's is it's very slow drying so not only can you move parts around, you can also get them back off should you require. So it's a good glue, and I'm favouring it more and more for doing sub-assemblies like this, where I have put the wrong part in place, and now I can get it back off and quick. So it is paying off, whereas the glue I was showing the other day on the Lancia, the gel, there's no going back from that stuff. It dries super quick. Right, we just need to line this part up as well. So we've got the rear shocks to line up, the holes in the body, uh, and a few other locating points to get in place. So that all lines up well. And then we've got these linkages here as well, which instructions are telling you to put on the wrong way. So I'm looking at thinking at the bottom, it looks like it bends out and it doesn't fit. So it bends in. And if you go to a page further along, it shows them installed correctly. So pay attention to that. So there's one side on and then the other. So, like I said, quite a complex kit, this. Quite a lot of detail in it. It was actually quite enjoyable to build. Cleanup was very tiresome. I was not enjoying cleanup at all. Uh, once I got it painted and started to get things assembled, it started to go together really, really well. Great discs. These are a weak point of the kit. They are crap. I'm going to be honest. They are dire. Um, I've widened the holes on these a little bit because they were quite tight. But they're just located in place like that. We've got some uh, resin. Scale Production Alpina rims on the way because I did have some other wheels, so I'm not too keen on using them. So, for me, I love the Alpina wheels on these uh, age of cars. I put them on my E30, I did, I put them on the 6 Series, I did, and they're going to go on this as well. Not everyone's cup of tea. And last time I put them on my 6 Series, I was told they were too big because they're 18 inch, but it's my model. And if I had this car, I'd stick 18 inch Alpinas on it if I could. So, they are currently on the way. So, at this stage now, we'd normally put the wheels on. At the end of this build but we can't today so we're going to be on hubs like if they've been nicked and it's up on bricks uh, but hopefully we'll be soon and i'm hoping 
the ride height's going to be good. We don't have to faff about with it. But again, we won't know until we get the body on, which we're going to test fit at the end, um, how it's going to go. So we're kind of um, in the dark a little bit at the minute. But anyway, we've got the drive shaft in, prop shaft in, and we can start getting the exhaust sections in. Now, a lot to this exhaust really is one of the most complex exhaust systems I've ever put together. There must be about 10 separate parts for this thing when they're glued together. So it's probably about 16, 18 parts altogether. So just applying the Bob Smiths in place, making sure we've got all the correct um, pipes in place, gluing it together just temporarily. Then getting the rear sections in place and then trying to lift it all in as one unit, which was easier said than done. But I just found this was probably going to be the easiest way to do it. There we go. Beautiful exhaust. Really is nice. And then a little dab of glue there at the back and in both locating points each side. Like I say, I'm loving these applicators. Go and have a look at them. Trust me, they'll change your life. And then we locate that one there. And then slot the two pieces at the back. A little bit fiddly to do. It takes a little bit of positioning and wiggling around to get it all in place. But it's doable. It's quite easy. And if you find a part needs to come off then. So be it, like I say, the Bob Smiths is an instant grab. So you do get time to work with parts, which is really useful. And we can get it lined up, pop it through, make sure it's in place. And there we go, job done. And then the front brake, brake disc. So, sorry, these are the rears. My bad. We can line these up. Get them in place. Not the most positive of fitments, this. Really is not the best. Sorry, these are the front, actually, aren't they? My bad. Um, so, popped it in. A little dab of Seagull at the top. Um, not very positive locating points, so I've hit them with a kicker just to hold them. And even with kicker, this stuff doesn't dry instantly, but just holds it enough so you can move things around. So the Bob Smith is getting good reviews from me at the minute. It's working very, very well. And then a couple of dabs of glue in place. We can get the front subassembly in, subframe, locate it with the uh, suspension strut and the chassis, get everything lined up. Now, the wheels aren't turning on this. They're going to stay straight. I'm not into all that. I'm not going to be running this around the carpet making noises. Well, maybe I will, but I'll be in my own private. It's my own business. I thank you very much. Engine. Now, it just sits on these little cradles. So I grabbed some of that wonderful glue, uh, gel glue I got off Amazon. Again, links for this in the description in my Amazon store. And then a little bit of Bob Smith's at the back. I thought we'll get it in place. Get it located into the drive shaft onto the gearbox like so and then we'll rest it in and it literally just rests on the engine mount so it has some leeway from side to side so i just centerized it and uh, just held it for a second or two until the glue grabbed it there we go just making sure everything's square and straight and then we've got that hose in that's just behind with the radiator and then we can put our airflow meter in and components airbox etc as well there we go, careful bit of glue. And then this just rests on the front of that inner wheel arch. So you need to put a little bit of glue in that front wheel arch where it sits. So they're a little bit fiddly to do. Like I say, it's not the most positive of fitting kits. It's definitely a little bit sloppy in areas. If I bought this as a Tamiya box in, I would be pretty disappointed, if I'm honest. Uh, even more so when I look back and think I paid £80 for this kit because it's so hard to find at a good price. But it's one of my favourite all-time BMWs. I love my older BMWs. And uh, yeah, it's worth the money. As long as you enjoy the subject, cost is relative, isn't it, at the end of the day? There we go. Little dab of glue. Every time I say a little dab of glue, it reminds me of the Flint Flintstones saying yabba dabba do. So maybe we should change a little dab of glue to a little yabba do. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. A little yabba do, or a yabba dabba do, or a little dabba glue. We'll see. Yes, that's Strange Ramblings with Paul, part three. So we have a yabba dabba do, or a little dabba glue. Anyway, 
onto more exhaust components. So these go underneath all the sub-assembly there. There's two little caping points in those manifolds we did earlier. There's two parts of this part we're putting in as well. I've already glued them in place. And then they need finagling, is my word, into that section there. So they're tricky and it needs a little bit of force and pressure. So if I can get it lined up, bring it back, grab it in an inconspicuous area, you're not going to damage it, give it a little wiggle. And then locate the front sections in place like so. I'm doing the other side now, but it's the same process. And then I found a little bit of kicker on one of the micro brushes. Just touch it in place, job done. And then the front suspension components. Now these are weird, they don't fit very well, but I've got them in place in the end. And then this little part here. Not only can be pretend to know what this is. I have no idea. It's a something. And it goes at the front. And there we go. Now wash, we've got some Tamiya black panel line wash, enamel based wash from Tamiya. We're going to thin it a little bit with some Sansador odorless mineral spirits. Um, because of the size of this thing and the complexity, we're going to get a nice biggish brush, mix it all together and slap it all over the engine, the running gear, engine bay and chassis everywhere. No real finesse, just get it slapped on there. Let it dry. We'll come back with a cotton bud moisten basantador later and remove as much as we want or can. All depends on you how weather you want it. You could leave it with the wash on and not take any of it off. But for me, I don't want that heavily stained look. Um, I just want it to look less monotone and have a little bit of depth, which a wash always does. My motto is if it holds a wash, put one in it. It's a good motto to have because it does bring metallic parts alive. Always does. Uh, like I say, using a bigger brush and a highly thinned panel line wash, it does flow around really well into all those areas. I sped this bit up for you because it was like five minutes long. Um, but I do like the Tamiya panel line wash. I've used it for a number of years. I've had this single bottle for six plus years easily. I barely even touched the surface of using it. I have thinned it with Sansador over the years because it's a little bit thick out of the bottle, I think. Um, I like it like this consistency, but I still keep it thicker for other uses. Um, so if you do need to thin it, take a little bit out, thin it, use it, and you can always pour it back in later. But we're just going to literally slap it everywhere and anywhere to hold a wash. If it holds a wash in a recess, if you let it dry, wipe off the excess, that wash will accentuate any areas. And trust me, it just makes everything look less monotone. Some areas aren't worth doing, like the brake discs, they're just terrible. They really are a weak point. Uh, but like the chassis, now the brake lines are something we were chatting about the other day. To paint these, they're a nightmare. They look awful if they're not painted properly. So my thought was, I leave them uh, the burgundy colour, hit them with a the wash, remove the wash, and then what I think I'm going to try and do is I've got a really thick lead weathering pencil, is I might run it over the top and see if it'll leave a bit of the lead behind, just to give it a bit of look. If it doesn't, I'm not really all that bothered because to hand paint those, it will go everywhere the paint and it'll look dire. And I know it will because I've tried to do it before on other cars and uh, it just does not go well at all. Hats off to anybody who can manage to do it. Uh, but for me, it's a definite no. I'm not doing that. I'd rather leave it body colored than risk ruining the model. So I think we'll try the pencil. We'll try that in part three. Let this wash all fully dry and just see if we can get a bit of tonal. Uh, color on there to uh, highlight those I'm guessing they are fuel and brake lines um, and make it look a bit more interesting there we go leave that wash for a good half an hour to dry and come with clean cotton buds with some Santador on you don't need loads of pressure because you don't it just doesn't need it at all and you don't need to get rid of every trace of wash leave it in all those recessed areas raised areas like I say if you want to leave it on and leave it completely weathered leave it as is this is Winston Newton Sansador to an odorless mineral spirits, and I use this for reliability. Never had an issue with it, it's always proved well. It's not cheap at all, but it barely smells. You can barely smell it at all. It's very safe on the paint. Um, so I use it all the time, but a bottle of it is quite expensive for what you get. But the bottle does last a long, long time because literally I put a little dab on that cotton bud, and that's enough, near enough to do the entire model. And we flip it around and use the dry side to dry it all off. Now, this is a big model. It's a big car with lots of areas of detail. So you may find it needs another cotton bud. But at the end of the day, it's, uh, cost is relative to me. I'd rather spend a little bit of money for a reliable product 
then use something cheap that's going to destroy it or absolutely stink. White spirit, I cannot stand the smell of, uh, and it lingers around forever. And there we go. That's where it all near enough cleaned up. Like I said, we'll, we'll pay attention to those lines later on. Engine bay doesn't look bad, but look at those ejector pin marks I missed. Thankfully, the one on the left is covered by a lot of parts, but they were just invisible to me. Couldn't see them until it was too late. Body shells back out. I just thought I'll test fit the body panel. So we've chucked the bonnet on, the boot on, etc. And I thought we'll try the chassis in place, which fits really well. Now, we've got a lot of components to go on inside. We've got a whole boot area, trunk. Um, we've got the whole uh, interior compartment to put in. I know there are fit issues. I've been told by many, many people. But so far, it's going together okay. Uh, it's fitting together really well. And uh, looking good. Yeah, got a nice tone of variation on the metallics. Uh, the discs are dire. It's just one of those things. They are not the best at all. Um, and then we're going to have to play around with ride height later. So I've got my E30 there. I've got some BBS wheels I have from Fujimi to test them. Uh, they're sticking out too far, so they need adjustment to get them in. But I just don't think the style of wheel suited to car. So I think these Alpina, the classic Alpina rims, which are roughly the same size as these with a slightly lower profile tyre, I get a little more better. And here we are, some pictures, some stills. So nice metallic work. We could have done better work. We always could. We could have filled all the seams better. But the engine bay looks all right, bar the ejector pin marks. Colour's good. Happy with the body shell. And also chucked on the bonnet, the boot, and the bumper for a quick test fit. The headlights are just placed in for now. Uh, and I'm looking forward to getting this done. Whether we're going to have issues at the end, I don't know. Look how strange those wheel locator points are as well. So we're going to have to mess around with those to get the wheels in place. Uh, but that's all to come in subsequent parts. The colour is stunning. We've got some polishing and flatten to do still. Uh, I just pray to God this all fits together because I'm going to be very disappointed if it doesn't. We've also got some nice metallic badges for the back that Philip Harp had sent me. So thank you, buddy. And that's us for part two. Okay, there we are then. That's where we're at today. So it's come out all right. Now, I've heard horror stories about this kit not fitting together. So God knows what's to come in the future. But it's fitting together okay so far. So I'm getting the fit issues are going to come from that boot area or the interior. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I'm dreading finding out. But everything seems to fit okay so far. So hopefully any problems that uh, come up we can fix. Because uh, I want to build this. One of my favourite cars. And I didn't I paid a lot for the kit, like I said. Um, so I'm really hoping it builds up all right. Uh, but it's looking good. Wonderful colour. Love the colour of this thing. And it's just an iconic BMW. It really is. I think BMW has brought out anything as iconic as this since the day this car came out. I'd have an 840 if it was my choice. I'd prefer the V8 to the V12. Um, but just wonderful car. It's a nice cruising BMW. It really is. So we'll find out in subsequent parts whether things are going to fit together. Uh, maybe in part three. We'll start to see what issues we'll get. Whether we're going to finish it in part three, I don't know. I think it'll be a part four part of this one. We'll have to see. So there we are. That's it. That's the end of where we are. Now, the question is, do we crack on with this on the interior and try and get this thing finished, or would we go back to a model factory hero kit? Don't know yet. I haven't decided. I've got the video to edit and sort out, and we'll decide from there. We'll see. As always, if you want to support the videos, the channel, uh, the content, the live streams, there's a Patreon link down below for PayPal me and a Buy Me Coffee link. If you become a patron, you're keeping these videos going and the live streams. And if you go tier two or higher, you get two week early access on all the videos. And there are currently over eight videos on early access that nobody else has seen as the patron. You get them on ISM eventually, which is where you'll be seeing this if you're not a patron. You have to wait two whole weeks. If you want to see them early access, and trust me, there's five parts of the Model Factory Hero Kit already on there built. Um, Patreon links down below, tier 2 or higher and you're also there in the knowledge knowing that you keep this content going because without your support with the patrons I uh, I couldn't carry on doing this also thankful as always everyone that comments on the videos, leaves a thumbs up thank you all for watching them and all the regulars that tune in and watch the live stream as well so thank you all uh, from the bottom of my heart, make sure you sub to the channel and click the bell notifications to get notified of the latest videos, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment as well, and as always in the description down below is a big long list of links for everything ISM related, me related, my modeling page, my scale mates, my Amazon influencer page, uh, the product list of all the products I use in the videos, uh, and links to my other channel that I stream on every day. All down below. Come and join us in the morning. You can watch them back. They're all pre-recorded there as well. If you become a patron, you'll just get an exclusive live stream once a week on a Wednesday morning as well. 
So there we are. Thanks for watching today. I will probably see you um, part three of this next. I think I'm going to crack on. Now, here's the question for today. What interior color do I do? Two classic interior colors for this car. There's black, which, whilst it looks good, it's a bit boring. Or there's gray, and that was a very popular color in the late 80s for these cars. Uh, I'm going to cut the rear window so we've got the full windowless, uh, pillarless center of the car, so you'll see right in. Or do we go with something a bit more funky and do it with like a burgundy interior? So we could do a burgundy carpet, burgundy seats with black accents on. What do we think? So you let me know the color choice down below. If you're watching this on Patreon as well, comment. Leave a comment. Give your feedback. Give your feedback. Make sure you give it a thumbs up as well. So what color choice should I go with on the interior? Let me know and I'll bear it in mind. Have a think. Thanks for watching today. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.